Libra friends, and welcome to your horoscope for April 2020. And Libra, this month, if we even just take a quick glance at what's happening on the weatherscape here on the board, you can see that you are still very Western Hemisphere heavy, which tells us, Libra, straight out of the gate, that this is a social month for you. This is still a social time for you. You are wheeling and dealing and talking and interacting with other people. And you're also needing to consider the information that other people are giving you, sharing with you, presenting to you, because it is a part of what the rest of this month has to offer, which is a continuation right here of forward motion before we get into this position um, next month where we start to do a lot more retrograding and especially your ruling planet of Venus. Now we have also got this month a full moon happening in your sign so we are going to look at regaining some balance and things like that and it will be in the context of relationships and I know oftentimes people will say oh Libras are all about relationships. Yeah you are. However, Libra, this is not just the relationship of you and one other person, right? This is a communication month. It's a social month for you. There's plenty going on in terms of traveling, and we'll jump into that. But it's also about having the right relation to the things that are around you. There is more to relationships than just people. Is the information you have in order to move forward, are they in the right relation to each other so that you can do with it what you need to? So let's jump in here and let's talk about this month, okay? First and foremost, we have got Mars and Saturn continuing on down here in your fifth house this month, meaning that Mars is bringing action, energy, movement, assertion, like what you're doing. You're actually boots on the ground. You're able to do it down here in the fifth house. So this is romance for sure. This is joy. This is self-expression. This is a lot of conversation. This is true love. And sometimes true love looks like something going on with your children or true love is a project or something you want to take a risk and invest in. With Saturn here, we know that you're taking a risk of some variety, whether it's speaking up or speaking out or doing something like that, but you're taking a risk that's pretty serious. It's going to take you to the next level. Some of you may be having children. You may be actually ready to have your baby or just finding out you're having a baby. But some of you, this could also be a new business, a new project, a new something that you're taking on. And Mars here all month long is helping you have boots on the ground action to be able to actually take care of that. Now, how you're going to get that done is with social energy. It's in the energy of Aquarius. So you're going to need to socialize. You're going to need to use technology. You're going to have to have conversations. You're going to have to look for groups and tribes and people and ideas and organizations that are in alignment with what you want to do. And maybe that's unique. Maybe that's special. Maybe that's something different than you've ever been a part of. But there is a big social piece in your life this month that is pretty serious, okay? We've also got Mercury and Neptune traveling together on this day, and I share that with you because this is foggy right? Like it's foggy energy. We can't quite see what we're doing. So this tells me in the sixth house for you that health is still pretty important, okay? This is, if you're feeling tired, Libra, you've been feeling tired, you've been feeling like, oh man, I just kind of need a break. I just, I need to sit down. Take it. Or the other thing you may have to look at this month is maybe you're taking actions that aren't in the right alignment for what you need to be doing. So it's actually creating a mental exhaustion for you that's keeping the rest of it down. Either way, whatever is happening in your health situation, I do want you to be mindful on this day because it's foggy. It's just foggy energy. Make sure you're eating well. Make sure you're hydrating. You're getting enough rest and all of that good stuff because it's really important to take care of your health here. This may also be a little bit of foggy energy that slows down a project you were working on or something like that. So okay? on the fourth, we've got Jupiter and Pluto coming together in a conjunction right here in your fourth house. Now, the beautiful thing about that is this hasn't happened for 13 years. So think back 13 years ago. What did you start? What did you take this huge initiative, this just launch of desire that you put something forward and it started you but also expanded you out into your world in some way shape or form now this would have been in the home zone right right here is the fourth house home family real estate property your new way of thinking your new psychological foundations they all are happening right here now another thing i want to bring your attention to is that pluto is also the ruler of your second house in the general reading which means that this is also something financial you can see some financial shifts coming and jupiter 
is the ruler of your third house, Sagittarian energy. So between Pluto and Jupiter, second and third house energies coming together, you could also be having a conversation about finances that do something to your home. Or maybe you're starting to work from home and make money that way. But it will also put an expanded emphasis on how you communicate, who you're communicating with, what you're communicating about. But you're certainly going to have a communication here that down the road in about a month or so would be phenomenal, especially around June, July, for buying, selling, printing a book, finish writing it, something like that. Something with some documentation behind it. Now, on the 9th, we're going to have a full moon that's happening right here in your first house in the energy of Libra. Now, because this full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted, Libra, what we're looking at is you. What needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted? Is there something about the way you've been showing up, something about your identity, something about um, how you've been interacting in your relationships? Have you been giving too much, not taking enough? Have you been taking too much and not giving enough? In your relationships, have you been unwilling to be flexible? I mean, we could potentially be in quarantine right now, right? So are you not willing to extend yourself out into these relationships so you're limiting yourself so you can't actually jump forward, right? You would want to make the adjustments here so that you can definitely have the expansion in your relationships. You are motivated with the sun over here to have these new relationships, but something internally may be holding you back. So check in on that, Libra. Where are you out of balance with your ideas? Where are you out of balance with how you're showing up? Especially because we've got Venus who on the third took a jump up here into the energy of Gemini. This is important information because as Leave as, as Venus moves up here into the energy of Gemini, it's your ruling planet, first of all, and it's towards the top of your chart. So we know that there is some kind of expansion happening for you, expanding out, but you're going to need to adjust to allow that expansion to happen. You need to have the right relationships travel with you. The ninth house is a house of travel. This is a social month, so we know that there is a lot of traveling going on, whether that be that you are essential personnel and actually getting on a flight or in a car and going somewhere, or your travel happens to be on the internet. Your travel happens to be in the expansion of some kind of information. Maybe you're traveling and you're connecting you're having these conversations and bringing these relationships in in some way that challenges the way that you normally do relationships. So this full moon, as it happens, is going to bring your attention to that and show you where it's okay to allow yourself to travel, expand out, have conversations with um Gemini conversations, ninth house, people who are different than you in some way, shape, or form. Maybe you are teaching. Maybe you're the teacher and you're teaching to a group of people who are not directly in front of you. So in this case, your message would be traveling, but you have to have this kind of surrender that comes to allow yourself to step out into the forefront of that. I also do think that this is a beautiful energy up here and in conjunction with the moon for our students. If you are learning or teaching something higher education or you're looking for information or you're doing research, this is a beautiful energy for you. Okay? All right, once we get to the 11th of the month, we're going to see Mercury moving out of this energy of Pisces and moving up here into the energy of Aries. I think that you, I think that Mercury is drunk, <laughs> but Mercury is going to move up here into the energy of Aries. Now with Mercury in Aries, what happens is we are speaking forcefully. This is the voice of the warrior. This is happening in your seventh house. We have just had a moon over here. I'm telling you, if there are some things you need to talk about in relationships, if you've been looking for some kind of partnership to come to flourishing, this Mercury energy, again, is in support this month of the conversation, of the social that needs to be happening. If you've been wanting to have, um, you know, have you been looking in order to allow this new start to begin? Are you looking for someone to partner with in business or in romance, right? This could certainly be Mercury helping you and giving you that initiation to the conversation to help you get those conversations and relationship um, decision makings going. I also think that uh, Mercury coming up there is a very good indicator for you because it's the conversation of 
What is Libra saying to Libra? What is your daily conversation with yourself? What's your daily relation to yourself? What are you saying and teaching yourself and allowing to come into your mind? Venus has a lot to do with nourishment. How are you nourishing yourself? So consider those things in the relation and relationships um, that you have in your life, okay? All right, on the... All right, on the 19th, despite what Mercury is doing, the sun is moving on into the energy of Taurus. So now you have light, heat, life, motivation, and essence up here into your eighth house along with Uranus being up there. The eighth house is a beautiful place of joint resources, right? There's intimacy that happens here. This is the house of not just intimacy at the level of I like you. This is the intimacy at the actual level of sex. So you could certainly have something going on with needing to check in with your reproductive organs, the um, root chakra energy, your sexual balance. Do you have balance in your body? Are you motivated? How is your system? How are you communicating with yourself in terms of your fears, your traumas, your desires to expand and share yourself with someone else? Again, Many Libras, I just have this sense you're looking for business partners or partners to help you learn about business in some way, shape, or form. So that could definitely help. Now, of course, also the sun in the eighth house does tell us taxes, money. Maybe there's a governmental influence that comes this way or something. Your partner or a partner that you're connected with could also have some kind of financial shift coming their direction as well. And it ends up ultimately being quite beneficial to you, okay? On the 22nd, we are also going to add a new moon over into this house. So plant the seeds of intention of what you'd like to see in the 8th house area of your life at an intimate level. Um, I just have to say, Libra, for so many of you, I feel like with Saturn jumping into this fifth house, you are getting ready to start something new. You're getting ready to launch yourself out into the world in some way that's that's different. But it's also sometimes very scary to take these new, very independent movements, right? Because the eighth house, while being a joint house, it does also say, well, what is your portion that you're bringing to the whole, right? So it's a very learn to be independent space as well. So it's this interesting interdependent home, but you're starting something new. And this could also at this new moon be your opportunity to plant the seeds of intention to even say, universe, please just show me where I'm going next. Show me who my partners are to go there. Show me how to get around my fears or my self-consciousness to be able to use that Venus energy and step out. That's a delicious, delicious energy for you to vibe into. On the 25th, Pluto is going to go into retrograde. Now, I'll be making a different video about more details about that retrograde. But what you want to know here is because it's in the fourth house, it's going to be going retrograde at 25 degrees of Capricorn. But in the fourth house, you may see things at home slowing down. You may see things home working from home slowing down. Maybe business is slowing down in some way, shape, or form. But it is certainly going to bring your attention to what needs to transform, what needs to evolve, and what needs to break free. If you're taking on something new, Libra, you may be the thing that needs to break free. You might be need to be ready to break free from old ideas and allow yourself to travel forward. It's a beautiful, beautiful energy, okay? So don't waste a minute. We it. will see Pluto leave his retrograde in October at 22 degrees of Capricorn. So a nice slow retrograde going for us, but this will be a brilliant time for you to look at the transformation and evolution that needs to happen in order for you to jump forward. Now, before we close out the month, we've got Mercury. Get it together, Mercury. Mercury moving into the energy of Taurus, a nice steady sign, right? Now, when Mercury moves into the energy of Taurus instead of the energy of Aries, where we're speaking forcefully, we're initiating conversation, we're going forward. Maybe there's even a little aggression or assertion in that Aries energy. When we come into the energy of Taurus and light up this eighth house space for you, this is a place of peace. There's some beautiful conversation. Taurus is ruled by the energy of Venus. You're having conversation up here that's maybe bringing some harmony. You're finalizing some decisions that need to be made. Of course, if anything romantic has happened, maybe you're enjoying the depth of intimacy there. This could certainly be intimacy in conversation as well. But one of the other things that I think of is because Uranus is here, you may just be 
so enjoying having conversations or getting information from different sources than you've ever really inter interacted with before. But again, it brings me back to this idea that some way there's a technological piece involved with you being able to move forward seriously in any way, shape, or form this month. But the travel and the expansion itself or traveling your message or getting a message traveled to you is absolutely available even though many of us are in a state where the areas that we live in are shut down. So this Mercury energy is going to definitely help you be savvy, make some long-term decisions and have conversations that lead to long-term stability, especially for things around your eighth house. Now, one other thing I will tell you as a Venus ruled energy, I lied, two other things I will tell you is one, anything that comes into your eighth house, especially in this combination of players is phenomenal. Um, for weight loss or for detox or if you've just been in the house and you're gaining the quarantine 15 this is a wonderful energy for detoxing that area detoxing your finances as well and mercury is clear and is savvy in the energy of Taurus so you will make some good decisions now the other thing I just want to bring your attention to is again Venus going into that pre retrograde time on the 9th of this month okay Venus is also in a state that we call out of bounds. So truly, it means as things start to slow down, look outside of your normal comfort zone for that information for how to travel things, for how to expand things. And then you will review that area as we get to May to June actual retrograde time. All right, Libras, I think it's going to be a beautiful month. I hope that you enjoy it. Whatever your status is, whether you're at stay at home, things around you are shut down, the ability to travel, to gain new faith, to get new information, and to use your social sphere to advance you forward is still very much so at your fingertips this month. So be creative, think outside of your box a little, and keep me posted in the comment section down below what you create, what you're advancing, and what you come up with, okay? I love you guys so much. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you next month. Bye, Libras.